Hi, I'm Amy Chapel from Amarina Designs and today I'm here to share with you a tutorial on how to make a hidden zipper pillow back when you're making throw pillows. I love to use zippers on my pillow backs because I like to overstuff my pillows a little bit and the zipper helps keep everything tight and um, kept in there neatly. Um, and I like to have a closure that I can swap my pillow forms in and out, especially when I'm making seasonal pillows um, or pillows that I want to transition in and out of for different seasons. That way I can store just the pillow cover and not all of the pillow forms as well. So to begin with, you're going to need a piece of fabric the size of your pillow front. In my case, I am making a 16 inch um, a pillow that or pillow cover that will cover a 16 inch pillow form. And it depends on your preference. Sometimes I like to um, start with a 16 inch piece of fabric when I'm making a 16 inch pillow. Sometimes I start with a 17 inch um, to account for the seam allowances. It's totally up to you and how firm you like your pillows or not. So start with the size of fabric um, that is the same size as the pillow front you are making. I'm gonna move this sewing machine out of the way for a minute. And you'll notice that my piece here is actually cut in two pieces already. Um, what you'll need to do is take your piece of fabric and then determine where you want the zipper to lie on your pillow back. I typically like to put mine um, just a little below center. Um, that's totally my preference. You could do it just above center. You could do it exactly at center. It doesn't matter where you do it. Just slice your pillow form or your piece of fabric that is Again, the same size as your pillow um, front, and you'll just slice it wherever you want the zipper to lie. So now you have your two pieces. The other thing that you're going to need is, um, you can use an accent strip, um, which I usually like to do instead of um, having it coordinate. I kind of like it to stand out a little bit. Um, and mostly I like to cover the zipper one, so that hair and things like that don't get stuck in the teeth, um, and also to keep my kids from messing with the zippers. So um, you're kind of wondering, why are you hiding the zipper if you're gonna make it stand out with a contrasting band of fabric? <laughs> Which I feel like the contrasting band lets me add a little interest to the pillow, um, as well as just keeping, like I said, hiding the teeth of the zipper from being exposed. So you will need a strip of fabric that is as long as your pillow is wide. So in my case, this is 17 inches. And then you will need it two and a half inches um, to be two and a half inches wide. And then you will press that piece of fabric in half along the length. And then the last thing that you're going to need is your zipper. And then you will also need just a couple of pieces of fabric that are one inch wide by, you know, two or three inches. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna cut off most of this um, so that we can add some tabs to the ends of our zipper. So that is actually where we're going to start. Your zipper will need to be at least as long as an inch and a half, two inches shorter than your pillow is wide. So if my pillow is, if I'm cutting this fabric 17 inches, I need my zipper to be at least a 15 inch zipper. Um, you can see in my case, I have well, um, a lot more zipper than that. So um, you need at least a 15 inch zipper or longer. Then what you're going to do is take your fabric, your one inch fabric tabs, and you're going to sew them down on your zipper. Now, there's two reasons that we're doing this. The first is so that we can eliminate any metal pieces from our zipper. As we sew our pillow back onto our pillow front, we don't wanna worry about running into any metal bits that might damage our sewing machine. So that's the first thing that we're doing. The second thing that we're doing is removing some bulk from our side seams and it allows the sides of your pillow to lay more flat. If you're trying to bend your zipper, um, you can see how the teeth aren't exactly happy to bend flat. And so you don't wanna have little bulges or whatever in the sides of your pillows where your zipper is. So I usually just start about a quarter of an inch away from this metal tab that is the end of my zipper. Now, if your zipper is exactly long enough, um, so it's only 15 inches, 
you don't want to um, cut off any more of your zipper than you can help. So what you'll do is line up the edge of your fabric for your tab right up next to that metal um, bit that holds the end of your zipper pull on. And then you will stitch down using a quarter inch seam allowance and then make sure that you back stitch um, a couple of times over the teeth of your zipper. Um, especially if you're using a plastic zipper like this one, your, your sewing machine should sew over it just fine. But you wanna reinforce the stitches there to keep your zipper together and your pull on. So you will do that on this end and then again, you'll come back and do it on the other end. So again, there's metal pieces on this end as well. We wanna get those out of the way. Plus we also want to eliminate the zipper um, from being inside our side seams. So if you are working with a longer zipper the way I am, you will want to make sure that you're leaving the zipper part, the part of the zipper you're leaving exposed is a little shorter than the length of your pillow. Again, you want just fabric in your side seams and not um, zipper. So you wanna make sure that you are, your half inch seam allowance or whatever seam allowance you're using for your pillow, plus the seam allowance you're using to sew your tabs on. So in my case, I wanna make sure I'm at least three quarters of an inch from the edge here, but I'm gonna just go up to a full inch and make sure that I have an inch of fabric on either end from where my zipper ends to where, well, from where this line of stitching is to where my edge of my pillow form is going to be. And I know this isn't super exact measurements here. Um, I have a blog post on my blog, A Marina Designs, um, that walks you through this as well. But this way, if you understand the math and the reasoning behind it, this lets you adjust this for every pillow that you're working with, not just if you're trying to make a 16 inch pillow using a 17 inch pillow cover. So I hope that makes sense of why I'm explaining it this way. So once you have, um, and again, especially on this side, I find it really helpful to pin the two edges of your um, zipper tape in place to keep them lined up with the tab that you're putting on the end, as well um, as to make sure that you don't lose your zipper pull in the process once you have this sewn down. So again, back stitch a couple of times over where the teeth are, and then you're ready to remove the excess part of your zipper. So what I do is just follow the line of my fabric and I'm gonna cut off the extra um, bits of my zipper tape here so that I just have that quarter inch that extends beyond the stitching. And again, I've reinforced this here. And if you want, you could take this to your machine and do just a little top stitch there. It will do two things. One, it's kind of a nice finished look to it, but it will also help to secure that zipper tape even more to make sure that you don't run any chance of your zipper pull coming off. And then again, you'll repeat this on the same side. Um, you wanna make sure again that you're cutting off any metal bits of your zipper um, to make sure that you're not running a risk of damaging your machine. You'll take those, again, stitch down this side or just press them well, and then you're ready to start building your pillow back. So what you're going to do is take the bottom piece of your pillow back, and I'm gonna turn this around because these hearts have just a little bit of a directionality to them. So this is gonna be my bottom piece. I'm gonna take my zipper and I am going to put it with the zipper side, um, with the pull facing onto the right side of the fabric. So they're right sides together. And then I'm just going to center this zipper along this top edge of my, um, the bottom part of my pillow back. So then I will pin this in place and I will take it to my sewing machine and I will run a stitch along this top part a quarter inch seam allowance. You can switch to a zipper foot if you feel more comfortable with that um, or just use your regular foot however it works best for you and your machine to keep yourself at a pretty accurate quarter inch seam on that part. Once you have that done, um, you'll take it to your iron and you're going to press your fabric away from your zipper and then top stitch down that top part. Once you get to that point, I'll meet you back here and we'll add the top. Once you have your zipper sewn onto the bottom piece of your pillow back, 
and you can see here that I've top stitched it. Now note when you're sewing around the zipper pull, just when you get to the part where the zipper pull is, put down your needle, lift up your presser foot, slide your zipper out of the way, and then continue sewing on. And again, you'll need to follow that tip again when we're sewing this top on. It's time to add our top piece and our band to hide the zipper. So if your band that you're using has a directionality to it, like this one does with the hearts, you want to make sure that the direction is facing up. So you'll take your bottom of your pillow right side up, and then you're going to take your band and make sure that it's also right side up, and you're gonna line that up with the top edge um, of your zipper, the top part of your zipper, and you'll see that it hides that whole zipper really well. And then you're going to take the top piece of your pillow back and again, if there's a directionality to it, you'll want to pay attention to that. So I want my hearts, these little tiny hearts in here kind of have a directionality to them. So I want my tiny hearts going the same direction. So I'm going to make sure that those are the same direction. And then I'm going to take it and flip it so that the wrong side is up. And the bottom of this top piece is lining up with the top of my zipper. So I'm gonna line up all of those pieces on this edge, pin it really well, and then go back to my machine, sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance again, fold back my, um, just the top fabric. I'm gonna leave the, um, the flap, the hot hidden part facing down. And so I'm only gonna fold back and press back this piece and then top stitch. So this piece goes up and this piece goes down and then our pillow back will be finished. Once you have finished sewing the top of your pillow back on and then done the top stitching on the top piece, you will have your pillow back totally finished. So you will want to trim off the rest of the tabs or you can do that after you've attached it to the pillow front. Then what you're going to do is you wanna make sure that you open up your zipper um, close to halfway to make sure that you have a way to turn your pillow right side out when you're finished. And then you're going to take your pillow front and then you're going to place your pillow back right sides together on top of your pillow front, just lining up the edges. Again, if there's directionality to your print, making sure that your pillow back is right side up. Um, if your seam allowance as you've been sewing your zipper on is a little less than accurate, you may need to trim down your pillow back a little bit. But if... Um, if your quarter inch has been pretty close, you should be right about there. So you will pin around all four edges of your pillow and again, sew around all four edges of your pillow and then your pillow is ready to go. If you are worried about the raw edges here, um, sometimes if I am going to be changing out this pillow cover quite a bit, I will go back and do a zigzag stitch over the edge of the seam allowance so that it reduces the amount of fraying that happens but typically I use this when I'm creating seasonal pillows and they're only going to get switched out a couple of times a year I don't anticipate them being heavily washed and so I don't usually worry about it but if it is again going to be used um, where it will be washed frequently or you're going to be switching it out a lot if this is going to be your standard pillow that you swap in and out for the seasons, um, you may want to go back and zigzag stitch or use a serger around the raw edges of your pillow before you turn it right side out. I hope you've enjoyed this pillow, um, this pillow back tutorial. If you want more information on the pillow front, you can go to my blog, Amarina Designs, or you can follow the video that I have on my YouTube channel or on the ThermoWeb YouTube channel. Um, you can find it there and I will link to those in the description for this tutorial. So I hope to see you out there making tons of pillows. If you'll tag me on Facebook or Instagram or even shoot me a picture of your pillows. I love to see um, when people make things using my tutorials. Have a happy day sewing and we will see you soon.